Hey friends, we are back on another Hangout. So glad to be with you guys today, playing my Ibanez RG4EX1. Love this thing. Been playing this thing since I uh, got it in October of last year, and just enjoying the heck out of it. I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's a beast. Uh, in fact, that's the name of this guitar is The Beast. All right, so yesterday I actually... Uh, just got done tuning the guitar. Uh, I've got some strings I'm going to put on it. I don't know, maybe in the next few days that uh, I've been sent by Ernie Ball to do. And uh, so excited about that. Excited about uh, some things that are happening. We're going to go ahead and start this hangout right from the get go. I'm going to try not to make it too long today. I realize a lot of you guys uh, usually have to leave in the middle of it because I, I tend to go on and on, but I'm going to try my best to kind of cut that rambling out today, okay? Because I really, really want to uh, get down to, to these to details on the, this Hangout. So I hope everything's in sync. Hope you can see everything. It looks like it's doing all right. There's a little bit of lighting, you know, going issues going on there, I can see. But uh, that's minor. So we're going to do a little bit of playing today, have, have a little bit of fun, and talk about some things that uh, are in the works and some things that have been in the works all right, so if uh, if you will, make sure to check out. Now, this is going to be live. I mean, this is going to be recorded and you know released later on YouTube. If you will, please check out the notes, the show more area down below uh, that will talk about the details of this Hangout. And just a little disclaimer there beforehand uh, on some of the things that I've been approached about regarding the Hangouts and some of my lessons. Uh, I definitely want to continue to make this all guitar-based. That's, that's my goal, is to uh, uh, enjoy, you know, sharing my love of guitar with you guys. But there are some business things and aspects that come up as well that I definitely like to share with you guys as well. So that's part of this whole guitarpreneur, guitarpreneur thing that's going on in 2014. Uh, and if you haven't seen that hangout yet, be sure to go back and check that out. We're talking about being a guitarpreneur in 2014 on my YouTube channel. And also, A New Year, A New Direction. That's the name of the video. It's part of that same hangout. Talks about that as well. But be sure to check out the show more area below. Thanks to everyone who's watching. I see there is one viewer. Not exactly sure who that is. Uh, you can go to the actual event page and uh, check it out. Uh, there's kind of two different events going on here. Uh, and I'm also doing something a little different today. I'm going to try to do this. I've been using Hangouts in Google Chrome. Well, every time I've been trying to do a screen share, it completely kicks me out of Hangouts. So I don't know if it's the browser, uh, Google Chrome, or what. So we're just going to try to do uh, in Firefox today. That's what I'm working on is doing the Hangout today in, in uh, Firefox instead of Google Chrome. Because later on, I'm planning on sharing my screen. And when I do that, I don't want to kick me out again. Hopefully, it won't do that. But uh, we'll see what happens on that. Okay, so... Uh, let's get right on into it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and view some of the notes that I've got over here. Um, let me see here. Oops, wrong thing. Let's go ahead and find my notes here. I've got, got I've got like the public notes and I've got my actual notes for myself. I'm having to read back and forth between the two. Okay, looks like we're going to start with a hangout top. It's the main points. Okay. Uh, the main point, number one, I recently released a major announcement, major announcement regarding my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course, uh, and I did that through my mailing list. Now, if you're not familiar with that, please go to bluegrassguitaressentials.com. Check out the mailing list and sign up because that's where all the, you know, uh, the details and the updates are going to be released before they hit the public, okay? You're going to be know about that, notified about that first thing, okay? Uh, the major update and... I'm just going to go ahead. It was, I think, last week that I released this, so you guys are actually getting this a little later. And so this is all about, as it says in the show notes down there, an early access opportunity. Now, <clears throat> it says here in the show notes that I'm going to be uh, uh, talking about that and let everyone else on the awesome idea I thought about and also um, kind of like how I came up with it and everything. Uh, my, my idea for this is to do kind of like a webisodes, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of like a webisodes type series thing. And right now it's almost the end of March, and another two or three days it will be. 
my, my original goal at the first of this year was to try to get this whole course done by March. Well, that hasn't happened. And that doesn't, you know, discourage me. It, it just lets me know that the deadline is going to be a little further down the line. It may be the end of April. I don't know. Right now, uh, in the process, I've just received uh, the uploaded version of video number three in the course. And I think there's going to be maybe, I don't know exactly the final number of discs. It's going to be either five or six, hopefully around that range. So we're about halfway there, uh, editing-wise and everything. And there's still some materials that need to be created by myself and by my uh, virtual assistants, my team. Um, but I'm trying my best to get that done. And it, obviously, I'm not going to meet the deadline. So what I've decided to do, and the idea was, is to create an early access opportunity. Now, what's going to happen is, what I'm planning on happening is, right now, video number one in the in the course is almost done. The, the editing's done. Um, they're, you know, uh, I've just been working on the intro and some of the ebook elements and some of that. It's almost done. I'm working on that, trying to get it done. Hopefully, this week and release within the next couple weeks. We're going to release each video as its own series, as its own webisode. And I'm going to have a special link for those who are subscribed to my mailing list. I'm going to let that link be uh, sent out to them first. Once again, if you're not on that mailing list, check it out. Check out the show more area below, and you can find the links for that. Um, so I'm going to release that special link to them first so that they can have early access to the webisodes. And I'm not sure on the final price, they're, very, they're going to be very affordable. They're not going to be, you know, like the, what the big course would be. But they're all going to be the same price, so they don't have to worry about, you know, pricing different things. It's all going to be the same price. It's going to be like, I don't know, $12 or $15, something like that. I, don't, I want to make it affordable and easy accessible by everyone. So that's what I'm planning on doing. That is my major announcement. Since I can't get the whole course out, why make everybody else wait because of that? I'm just going to go ahead and as they're done, as each element of the video in the course is done, release it. Then later on, I'll come back and put, and bundle the whole course together and sell it as an actual course. It'll, it'll be available as an actual course. And the, the, I got this idea just, I don't know, it's just like it just came to me. Why not just sell it as episodes? I got it because I was thinking about, and, and it said this in my newsletter, so I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, tell you about this too real quick. <clears throat> uh, I got to thinking about, you know, all the series that everybody's watching, like, you know, when Lost, when it was very popular, and um, then you had, you know, right now, Downton Abbey is pretty popular. Uh, you've got, you know, I've been watching King of Queens, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. you got Seinfeld. you got Everybody Loves Raymond. Just different, um, different, uh, series of TV, TV series available on like DVD, and it's always in you know you got series season one, season two, season three, whatever. And I don't know as far as seasons go. Right now, Bluegrass Guitar Essentials is the only bluegrass course I have. I plan maybe on later down the line, maybe having a bluegrass guitar, you know, kind of like a basics course and maybe an advanced course, depending on how all that goes on. And then we may refer to those as series and then episodes one, two, three in that series. I'm not sure. But for now, we're going to have episodes one and two. Whatever is in that video will be episodes whatever that is. Then the next video will be the continuation of that, episodes three, four, whatever the topics are covered. And I thought about that, you know, the Downton Abbey and all that, and I thought, you know, that's all the craze right now. Everybody's wanting to get that stuff on. Uh, there's all new series being released all the time. Uh, they're wanting the DVD versions of it, or they'll pay on Xbox Live or some other, you know, Netflix, and they'll pay to get the streaming access to that. And what I decided to do is, you know what, Just let's just make this whole course available as a, a series of webisodes, okay? Now, um, basically, a webisode is an online episode that you can access online. Now, these will be fully downloadable courses uh, with the companion ebook to each one. That's the plan. And what will happen, like I said later on, is we're going to bundle it together. And the cool thing about this is, is there's a book that I've got. I'm probably going to do on a uh, books that I own that you need to read. Another one of those. I've got one ready to release soon, but I'm, I'm thinking about doing another one real quick sometime soon. And that is on the Purple Cow by Seth Golden and the sequel to that book, Free Prize Inside. Both of those are awesome books. But I was, I was actually sitting down reading the Free Prize Inside book. I recently started it back up because I, I kind of read half of it, put it aside, found some other books I was interested in, 
and then came back to that one like a year later. So I finally finished that book, and now I'm back, and I start reading there, and all of a sudden it talks about different ways to sell your idea, different ways to create a free prize. In other words, go over and beyond, above and beyond what you already offer to make it remarkable, which is what the Purple Cow book is all about. Awesome book. you got to get that if you haven't read it. Um, <clears throat> the cool thing about these books is that the Purple Cow book actually came in a milk carton, and the free prize inside book actually came in a cereal box. I don't know if they still do that, but that was available when they first launched. Obviously, you're going to be talking about that. That's going to be you know something just you'll, you'll see worth sharing. But anyway, I was reading the free prize inside book, and I come across where it said one of the ways to have a free, free prize is to unbundle your services. And I didn't get the idea from that. I got the idea, as I said earlier, from uh, creating or from um, – watching different series of TV series and things like that, and, and the idea just came to me to, to release my courses that first. But then when I read that, it was sort of like a confirmation. It was talking about unbundling things that are normally packaged together, you know, sell them as individual things. And, I, and you know, that, that really, that, that told me I had a feeling that that was what needed to happen. And so for you guys, I'm not going to make you wait. If you are an, if you are an uh, um, a subscriber of the mailing list, you will get notified of that. The, the special link will be released to you, and then I will release it to the general public probably after about at least uh, two or three episodes have been available, okay? Um, so if you want early access, that's what this is all about. If you want early access, check out bluegrassguitaressentials.com. Sign up for the mailing list. And not only that, I've also figured out a way. This is basically the... the uh, mailing list is being archived. Every update that I've done is being archived as a Google Doc. And so from the moment you start uh, on the mailing list, you it'll say, if you've missed any updates, check out this Google Doc. And so you'll have, from day one that I started the mailing list, every update that I have done. And right now I've got like pages of updates of things that's going on and you can see the whole process from beginning to end and I'm going to keep that as an archive and maybe release that later. I mean that's it's pretty interesting. It just that's another idea that came to me one day. Let's just instead of people coming in not knowing where to go, not knowing what's going on, let's have them give them a place like kind of like a roadmap of what's going on so they'll be up to date from the minute they start. So when you start you're up to date once you read that document, okay? So thanks to whoever's watching. Don't know who's on here yet. Uh, we got two viewers says on the bottom, it says, Dad is one of them. So my dad, for the first time, is tuning in. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching, Dad. Uh, you definitely need to check his videos out. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel he just started about uh, the King James Bible, and I highly recommend those videos. He's, he's just started on YouTube, and uh, congrats on that, Dad, because it's a, it is a long, hard process sometimes getting something, something like this going. And I actually mentioned to him about the Google Hangouts format, which is what I'm doing. Uh, he's been having problems with Skype, but now we finally got it working. So Hangouts is another great way to go ahead and you know meet with people online. You don't have to do it on air for everybody to see. You can just schedule a Hangout. So uh, that's that's a really cool thing to do there. So that, that was the, the major announcement regarding Bluegrass Guitar Essentials, okay? That's what's coming up. That's what I'm working on. Um, let's see. Before we get to uh, the next topic, let's just play a little bit, okay? Now, I'm just playing whatever's on the top of my head. No big deal, you know? So uh, whatever comes to mind, I'll be playing. I don't want to, you know, saturate this hangout with a lot of blah, 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 okay? Don't want to do that. So... Let's just play some, you know, some whatever I come up with here. Uh, now I'll be talking about this later, but I'm, I'm working on off of my Digitech RP355 pedal. Just some stuff I've been messing around with. I bet we have some clean. I like some uh, clean. This setting is called Crystal. We'll see what that comes up with here. Thank you. 
Hope you enjoyed that. That's just something I've been working on. Uh, just a little bluesy thing. I don't even know what to call it yet. Just something I've been working on. Now, but something I was going to try to do, and I totally messed it up. Let's see. Oh, there it was. No words on the wrong string. Okay, so here's a little turnaround that you can work on. <clears throat> So basically, if we're in E, let me try to get a different uh, sound too, because that's not exactly as loud as I'd like it to be. Let's try this one. Okay, so there's a little turnaround, uh, and basically, you're starting. It's kind of like an A7. You an A on an A7. You've got um, and that's terrible to, to see, but you've got the D string and you've got the B string on the second fret. Now you're skipping the G string, so you've got this little split. These fingers aren't together, they're kind of split, you know, kind of like that. They're not together, they're split. So they're kind of standing over the G string. Now if you do that uh, one more time and put your uh, uh, middle finger on the second fret, then you have a gap of two strings. So the between the two fingers here is a little bit bigger. So what you would do is, to do this turnaround, you're going to do that on the E and the D strings of the same fret. Now, if you're in, if you're in E, not the D strings, excuse me, the E and the G string. And if you're in E, you're going to start that up at the fourth fret, okay? So we're going to do, and this is hybrid picking, okay? This is not, you know, this is not just straight picking. This is hybrid picking using the pick and the fingers. So this will be, you're playing the blues and you want to do that little turnaround. You just do... You're going to pick these two together, the E and the G strings, and then with one of the bottom fingers here, you're going to hit that open E string. That's your pedal tone. And usually it's a hybrid, picking the E string, and then picking the G string again. And then scoot it down half a step, do the same thing. One more time. And then you'll end up on the E, and I usually use a hammer on here for that uh, G string. Okay. Now, if you're in G, the thing is, if you're in a different key, this is a little different. Let's let's say G is right here, right? Now, to do the same thing. To be on the same two top strings here, you have to come up here to the seventh fret. And what I'm thinking of when I'm doing this is a D chord. Which is if you're playing a D like this, it would be with your thumb up here. Like if I was playing a D down here. But up here you have to have you know these two fingers. So move that up here to the seventh fret, and then your pinky is going to be on. For the for two times, your pinky is going to be on the eighth fret of the B string. So we have the E string, G string, B string. Okay. And now instead of hitting that bottom 
uh, pedal tone hitting that bottom E, we're going to hit that B string. And then this is a little bit of a stretch. And what we're going to do is switch. We're going to come down here, and this one, we're going to put our finger on the third fret because that's where the G is, and it's closer when we're descending. It's closer to this side. Okay, so the same thing. Now, if we see this as a G, if we see this as the bar chord form with the F shape here, which is the E shape of the caged method, we're going to start that turnaround. It's always going to start two frets above where your last two fingers are. So, one, two, that's the seventh fret. If we were in E, the nut now is acting as our first finger. So, once again, one, two from the last two fingers is third. Fourth fret. But if we're in if we're in G, if we're in another uh, position that doesn't have that open string useful, uh, now if we're in, in B, it's a little different because we have an open string there. So if we were in B, uh, that's right here. We go two frets higher than the last two fingers. One, two. Then we can use that open B for our pedal. but it's a lower B. It's not a high one like we would expect. So that's up to you what you would want to do. We can even do this for E and use this. But why do that when you've got an open string? You can kind of do both maybe. It's a little difficult. And plus, you'll if your strings are out of tune, people will notice that. So basically, that's a lesson for you to, to keep in mind. Think of the G chord or the A chord, wherever you're at, from the last two fingers of this F shape slash E shape chord, uh, it's going to be one, two frets over, and we're going to make that shape. And for anything other than G that doesn't have a pedal tone, like you know a high E, you're going to put that pinky on the very next fret past that on the B string. And when you come down, it's a little different because now whichever finger you're using here has to come down to the high string because you're going to switch the note from the B string to the E string here. Okay, so there's your lesson. All right, there's a lesson for you. Now, let's see who else is in uh, the chat room with me right now. I uh, don't see anybody else that says there's still one viewer. I'm not exactly sure who that would be. But anyway, we'll kind of skip this over so I can see what's going on. By the way, if you have a question, if you are on the event page, uh, you have to actually go to the event page. If you'll go to where it says details on the uh, right side, now this is for people that are live. If you're on the event page uh, and you'll go to the, you know, the says the details and, and click to where it will expand, where it says read 76 lines or whatever it says, it'll say actual event page and then it'll have a link. So click on that. And then you can go, there's a Q&A button that you can do. That you can click on the Q&A and it'll ask a question and I'll be able to answer that, okay? So, and it will notify me that, about that here on the Hangouts thing. That, could, that brings me to my second point, okay? The second point that I'm going to go over right now is switching of my YouTube channel from my actual profile to my Guitarpreneur page, okay? I've been trying to do this for months. Uh, for at least a month and a half, probably. And finally, what happened was the the web the um, email address that YouTube was replying to me. Whenever I replied back to them, it wouldn't work. It would just say mail delivered wrong or something. And for me, I thought, well, it's because the URL is or the email address has a weird format. It had like um, support at you know youtube dot youtube dot com is is something weird like that it had two dots in it or whatever for the email address which hardly ever happens it's usually at something at something dot com well this was something at something dot something dot com so I thought that had something to do with that but evidently it didn't because the other day it worked and now finally my YouTube channel is now transferred to my Google or my Guitar Plus Google page my guitar excuse me my guitarpreneur Google Plus page. The reason I did that is because you can add managers. Uh, if you link your YouTube videos account 
to a Google page. Uh, and I wanted to do that later on, especially if I decided to uh, have some virtual assistants like create thumbnails or create descriptions or write articles or whatever. I could give them access to my YouTube account without giving them my main password. Okay, and you can see, you know, how important that would be uh, with 400 something plus videos and half of them, well, about 100 of them are, are unlisted right now because they're newsletter accessible. If you go to the Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar dot com slash newsletter, those videos are reserved for that newsletter. Um, so with that many videos, you don't want to take a chance on somebody, you know, getting your account and messing it up. Whereas if they're a manager, they can't delete your account. They can't do anything that would really completely destroy your account. Like it, I'm not saying they would do it intentionally, but if it was on part, on accident, you couldn't get that back. So you definitely would want to be able to have a way to work around that. And the only way right now that I can think of is having them to be managers on my Google Plus page. And so now all my videos are linked to that plus page of the, called the Guitarpreneur page. So if you're looking for my name on, on YouTube, Eric Beatty, you type in the search box, it'll show you the Sword 6204 channel, and it'll show you the Guitarpreneur page. Uh, the Guitarpreneur page is the one that has all the videos now. They're all transferred to that one. But for some reason, I can still give you the link of Sword 6204, and it will take you to all those videos, I think. Uh, that's the way it works out in my experience. I can type that in and it takes me straight to whatever page I'm on. So if uh, for some reason the Sword 6204 link is not working, then definitely, you know, just type in my name and type in the Guitarpreneur page and that's where all the videos are. It's weird because it didn't affect at all uh, the subscription rate. It didn't affect my analytics, which I, I was really afraid that it was going to mess up all my analytics, all my AdSense and all this other stuff. It was a smooth transition, and uh, later on I got to thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Now it's probably completely messed up everybody being able to find my videos, but it hasn't because I'll have to keep, keep an eye on that, on the analytics, to make sure that it's still doing the same thing it was. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine because I've already got a presence online. I've got a presence on YouTube that you know people already know where I'm at, and they'll, they'll be able to know what's going on with that. Okay, so... That is basically, that was the second point, if you're looking below the talking point. The second main point was discussing what to expect now that my YouTube channel is connected to my Google Plus page instead of my YouTube account. This kind of was a hassle at first, trying to get used to that, because now you have to go over and click on your, your icon and go down to your page before you can add videos and all this. And I just didn't want to have full of that. So all the Hangouts and all that other stuff, it, it kind of makes it a little difficult, because now I have to create an events page on the actual my, my Google Plus pay, uh, profile and then link it to this event that's actually going on through the Google Plus page. So that's a little bit of a hassle on itself, but if I'm going to be a business entity, then I need to have a business page, and that's what this guitarpreneur thing is all about, especially since I'm wanting to go in the realm of guitar and entrepreneurship, you know, trying to make a living, teaching guitar, playing guitar, you know, releasing guitar courses, all this stuff that encapsulates all of that. So whoever the viewer is, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I don't know if it's still dad or not, but uh, uh, I am watching the chat thing, the, uh, the events page. So if you're on there, then I will see when you create a message or whatever. So the next thing we're going to talk about is, let's see, the main points. Just talked about that. That was another major change. Some updates, okay? The next thing we're going to talk about is updates. And updates that I've got for you, and I realize, I, I begin to think about this, I want this to be evergreen content, these Hangouts. I don't want it just to be, well, here's what I'm doing, and all this other stuff is going on, and, you know, something that's not going to be helpful in the future. That's why I decided to do a lesson there. You can always come back to this, right? Other people can learn from this, you know. Um, I want it to be evergreen, so I don't want to do spend too much time doing updates and stuff that, isn't really relevant to my channel, but I realize a lot of people, you know, enjoy seeing the whole process of, you know, living the the entrepreneur entrepreneur lifestyle and being a guitarist and and the whole vlog aspect. This is kind of a vlog as well, uh, seeing what's going on with me since I don't do a lot of vlogs lately. Updates: I sold finally uh, my MXR Prime Distortion pedal. I sold it, uh, guy online on either Craigslist or because I forgot to ask you. 
he was interested. He called me up. He come up and picked it up, and I was glad to be able to sell that because now that gives me a little extra money to go towards another pedal baby later on down the line. Uh, but I only had like half of it left after spending on like maybe eating out or you know just celebrating. You know how it, when you have a victory you want to celebrate, but that kind of uh, kind of diminishes your wallet uh, power so to speak for a little while. But I put about half of it in my uh, bank account so that I can use that as another pedal later on. Now the MXR Prime Distortion pedal. If you haven't seen my videos on that, I've got if you, you can just go on my channel and type in MXR uh, pedal or MXR or something and that'll come up. Uh, I actually did a few videos. I did a uh, unboxing video. I did a video on the demonstrating of that pedal, which was in a you know backing track type of thing that you can go download. There's a link to that on the show more uh, of that video. It's called Sailing, and it actually shows you what it sounds like in various you know rhythm and solos and kind of things like that. I also re very recently uh, did a comparison video with that one to the new the new Joyo pedal. The ultimate drive that I've had for a couple, a few, well, about a month and a half, a little bit over that now. So you can actually see what it sounds like compared to overdrive pedals. It makes our prime distortion is a distortion pedal. It was created exclusively, I think, for musicians' friend. So you have to get it either through them or through somebody that owns one. You can't just go to you know guitar center and get one because it's from musicians' friend, if I'm not mistaken. They do this. Companies do this from time to time. I know because this guitar actually is a a guitar from Ibanez that was made for Guitar Center, this particular model, and you can't, you know, uh, get it in Musician's Friend or whatever, as far as I know, because it was made for them. But I did some comparison videos on that, and you can go check that out by looking up uh, MXR. All the tags will lead you to all those videos that I just mentioned. So the next pedal that I will probably be getting is another Joyo pedal for sure. Joyo, I've become very enamored with those guys, amazed by their quality. A craftsmanship uh, probably will be adding when I do up for sure there will be a demonstration video and there will be an unboxing video and there'll be all that cool stuff on this channel when I decide to get another pedal but I'm thinking it'll probably be either a chorus or a delay uh, both of those are very essential uh, to, to the tone that I like to have uh, for example if I go back here and uh, switch on the um, sound I had at the very first of this you can hear what it sounds like without any chorus or delay. This has a little bit of reverb. Let me go ahead and take the reverb off and I'll show it to you what it sounds like. Okay, so it's very plain. Got some good heavy, you know, distortion sounds which is kind of like what my Joyo Ultimate Drive kind of accomplishes. It's not a distortion pedal, it's an overdrive pedal. Later on I plan on doing maybe a video on the differences between distortion and overdrive. I haven't gotten really, it's not a priority right now. I haven't sat down to do that and plan it out. But um, the Joyo pedal isn't exactly that, that, it doesn't have that much power. And I thought about getting a another overdrive pedal, not overdrive, but distortion pedal from Joyo. That I see, like they've got a high gain distortion and they've got a crunch distortion. You know, something that would give me closer to that '80s sound that I like, that '80s tone that I like, like Paul Gilbert or you know John Petrucci or whoever. That I, that I would have that's not in a, a multi effects pedal like the Digitech RP355, which I'm using right now to get all these tones. Um, but I think I'm going to settle on either an analog, or, I mean uh, either a uh, um, chorus pedal. Uh, or delay pedal. I mean, they're so cheap. They're like thirty dollars a piece. So I can get one now, and then like I could have, you know, get a new student, which is happening soon. And I can use some of the money from that to get another pedal all together. So that could be happening back to back. It could be happening soon. I don't know when that will happen, but that's just my thoughts on that. But the reason I decided not to get a actual another distortion pedal is because I found the other day I've still got my Ibanez Tube Screamer and I've got my Joyo pedal. And when I enabled the Tube Screamer after hitting the Joyo pedal, I found that it really got the tone that I was looking for. I really enjoyed the tone. It was nice, smooth, and compressed sounding, and it was just a little bit of extra articulation because with the Tube Screamer, the Ibanez Tube Screamer, you have a lot of, you know, you get a lot of that articulation that you need. I mean, it, it picks up, you know, every little nuance that you're doing with your pick and uh, really has a nice sound, and plus you can roll it off in both of these pedals 
sound very good when you roll them off, and that just adds to extra uh, articulation. And so I found that when I use the Ibanez pedal as a boost, since I'm going for a, a heavier tone now, I could still use the Tube Screamer for a, a Texas Blues sound, and when I want to go into high gear, I can use the uh, Joyo Ultimate Drive and pair it with the Ibanez Tube Screamer as a boost. So I would roll the distortion off. You don't want too much extra distortion, but I roll the distortion off a little bit, have the level, the level up a little bit so that when I hit it, it engages a, uh, a heavier, more articulated tone that I like to hear. So that's a little tip for you guys. If you have two different distortion pedals, use one of them uh, as a boost for the other. Because, I mean, it's, it's very awesome when you think about that, that you have all these options here available to you, and you can um, not only, like if I, had the, if I had one pedal and it has three knobs, okay, uh, well, the Joy Ultimate Drive has, I think, four, three or four knobs. It's over there on the floor. It's got three knobs and a toggle switch for the high and low gain or whatever. Um, and the Tube Screamer has three knobs. Well, if you use both of them as one pedal in combination, then you have a total of six parameters plus the toggle switch. So that's awesome. I never thought about that before, that you can actually use two pedals and create one pedal uh, by mixing the sounds like that. And what you could do is put maybe one of them, I don't know, in a different spot on the chain. Maybe you want them before chorus for your main pedal and after the chorus on your uh, your boost pedal or something. I've got mine paired right next to each other. Uh, the first one in the chain is the Tube Screamer. The second one is the Joyo pedal. I don't know if that matters that much if I, I switch them. Uh, I'm guessing that it probably would because in the first is the Tube Screamer. So the tones from that are going to go directly to affect the tone of the Joyo Ultimate Drive. If I had it backwards, then the Ultimate Drive tone would affect the Tube Screamer. And I want the heavier thing. I want the the more tone, the, 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 the bigger distortion tone on the end of that spectrum because I want it most prominent. With the Tube Screamer, it's giving you a little bit of you know, nuance, uh, a little bit of flavor on top of, uh, just underneath that overall sound of the Joyo Ultimate Drive pedal for me, which is my main pedal. So experiment with that. If you've got two different pedals that are distortion, one's overdrive, one's distortion, or you've got two overdrive pedals, kind of like my case, those are both the overdrive pedals, uh, although the Ultimate Drive is basically borderline distortion. I mean, it's, it's, it's nearly there. Uh, then definitely you can go check and, and try doing that with your, your thing, your pedals. Now, I never did really say, you know, uh, my review on the MXR pedal, just realized that. My overall in, impression of that, for me, it was just too gritty. It was too, too, too much of a grainy sound. It wasn't very smooth. It wasn't very articulate. It was just all out loud. I mean, um, it, it does claim to have those 70s slash 80s tones, and I'm not going to argue that, but I will say that it did have a little too much grain, like I said. It had a little too much sizzle to the sound, and it was just overpowering everything you know that I wanted to, wanted to do with that pedal, uh, that I wanted distortion beat to be, as well as when I kicked in my wah pedal, it wasn't very, you couldn't really tell there was a, a distinct sweep there. As uh, um, on the other hand, with the Joy O pedal, you can definitely hear it, that it's there. You still have that wah sound. So I don't know. Um, you could try it out. It, it's it's like forty dollars, I think, on Musician's Friend. If you want to try it out, fine. Uh, but I recommend maybe going to a music store or maybe contacting somebody that has one and maybe trying it out or something. You know, if you can go to Musician's Friend, I don't know if you can go to a guitar center and try one out since it's. I think just for musicians, friends. So, you know, try it out before you buy it. You know, because it might be hard to to buy to sell it at the price that you bought it for. Because with me, I sold it for, I sold it for like five dollars cheaper than what it was valued at. I think, and uh, I, but it was ten dollars more than what I paid because I had a coupon when I bought it. So I did make a ten dollar profit. So anyway, that was my uh, thought on the updates, and my next pedal to consider, and not considering all that other stuff. So. The very last update that I'm going to come across before I, after I take a swig of my power here, which is actually just um, Hawaiian Punch, you know, sugar-free powder mix stuff in bottled water. 
is I've got an exciting giveaway to give away. Exciting for me because I haven't done a giveaway in a while, and I've been wanting to for a while. Now, so. <laughs> Now, what I was going to say earlier that I totally forgot is just to tell you, you know, the the sounds of chorus and the sounds of um, delay. That's why I wanted to get both of those from the get-go, get chorus and delay, because delay kind of acts as a reverb anyway, so you don't really need a reverb. And most amps come with reverb, so that ain't no big deal. Uh, so here's that, that what you just heard there. That's just plain, you know, no no reverb, no nothing. So let's add a little bit of chorus to that, and you can see the big difference. This is called a dual chorus. Okay, so that's chorus. It has that little warbly sound, but the cool thing is it's called a dual chorus, so it's kind of like a surround sound in your face. Kind of, like, it's a very pleasing sound. And you got different choruses on this uh, RP three fifty five from Digitech. There's a TC chorus, which I guess is after TC Electronics. <laughs> Okay, and then there's a CE chorus. Which is a little more warbly, warbly okay? Now, once again, if, if the sound is sounding weird, I apologize. That's the way it happens on Google Hangout. It seems like every time I do Hangout, when I do anything that's kind of loud, the... Uh, you're going to hang out has like a sound filter slash attenuator and it really kills the, the actual tone of the sounds I'm going for. So anyway, you've got a bunch of different courses and you've got uh, the dual course and you've got a multi course which has different voices. <laughs> okay. So one chorus pedal can do a lot of different things, okay? So I'm going to go back to dual chorus and then add a little delay, okay? So here's our delay, and this totally kicks it up a notch, all right? Hear that little delay at the end? That's what people like Joe Cetrioni, uh, Steve Vai, and a lot of those guys use for the big solos and stuff. Paul Gilbert, I found, doesn't use a lot of delay. He relies on just pure tone. Delay can get in the way, okay? Uh, that's a good, a good little thing to remember. Delay can get in the way, all right? So just remember that. If you want, like, solid tones you can add delay to later using software on your computer or on the, you know, um, um, the software editor, the audio editor, you know, like GarageBand or Audacity or something like that, the recording software is what I'm trying to say. You can add that later if you want just a plain, clear, and articulate tone. You can add that chorus, you know, like especially if it's something like really fast picking. That's very clean. But when you put a delay on that, that's not as clean. Now the level is down to like 13. If you put it up to like 50, you definitely hear it. A little too much, right? You got a little too much delay going on there. So we're gonna bump that down again uh, to about 13 or so. Try to. It's it's there. It goes. So that's digital delay. You also have analog delay. Once again, you can hear a lot of that in there when you're doing the fast leaks. So. Okay. 
Okay, so that's analog delay. Then you have whatever this is, DM-2. It's a little bit more tape delay, echoey sound. It's a little, I don't know, it's a little muddy sounding. Modulated delay. But the cool thing about modulated delay is it already has a chorusy sound. If I take the chorus off, that's very nice. It has, it already has that chorus sound. So if I can get a delay pedal that has modulated delay, that would be, you know, that would kind of solve that problem. But um, you couldn't really do as much as that as, we, as you could with chorus. <laughs> Okay, so that's a very good sound. Pong delay is back and forth, ping ponging. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that, that kind of <laughs> almost gives you your equilibrium, uh, you know, kind of like a little wake up call. Very pongy, tape delay. <laughs> then you got echo flex delay. <laughs> Okay, so all kinds of different things. That's, that was just to show you, you know, why I like, I would rather have these two effects first is chorus and delay. Now, let's get back to the giveaway, okay? I just wanted to take a break there and play some for you guys. All right, the giveaway here. And before I do that, let's see. Nobody else is on here on the Hangout. Okay. All right, so the giveaway that I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I've already mentioned doing this earlier uh, in a, uh, an update video that I had. So what I've got here is recently Ernie Ball has sent me a bunch of strings, as you know, that I've been talking about. Well, right now I finally uh, finished the first string review. It's 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 done. I'm going to you know look over it and upload it and release it in the coming weeks. Uh, right now I've got another string review that's about to be released first, which is the Monel the Martin Monel strings, uh, the signature Tony Rice strings. So those are coming out soon. They would have come out sooner, but I'm, like I said, I'm getting the, the Bluegrass Guitar videos released kind of every other week to kind of balance things out. Um, there's another one due out next week, by the way, uh, which is you know going to be another. It's going to be the third one, I think, for the the course. So it'll have tabs and all that where you can download them and everything. Uh, but the, I've got um, the strings that they've given me, Ernie Ball. I've got like, several packages of them, and they've given me also. They sent me a couple packs of their picks. So I've got two packs of picks here, two packs of pickle pepper pop, popper pick to pickle pepper. Okay, say that five times fast. And I've got the pink fluorescent. They are wear resistant Delrin. Delrin is the same thing that Dunlop uses for their Tortec picks. Tortex. These are the pink ones here are 0.73 millimeters, and there's 12 of them in here. Bag of 12. The fluorescent neon, which you know I love. Are medium gauge, and I have been dying to try these out. And uh, because I don't know, it seems like the Dava picks. I actually did a review on this as well. If you go look for the Dava grip tip review or whatever on my channel, the Dava picks where they have that little slinky center. I don't know. It's just it seems like there there's a little bit of wobbliness to the pick because it it does have that little very thin center so that it can flex. And I don't like that when I'm trying to play. I need something that I can, you know, that's very durable. And I've been experimenting still with the, uh, get that over here on my shirt so you can see it. The Dunlop Jazz, I think it's a three. Yeah, the Dunlop Jazz three picks. The only thing about that is they're so stinking small that I really, you know, the thing about that is it allows me to, it forces me to have more control and more precise accuracy with my hand 
but it's not good for strumming. I mean, it, I mean, it's just very small. I don't like something that small. So I've been dying to crack these babies open so you can, uh, so I can play with these nice neon, neon uh, uh, guitar or neon colors that I love. You, you, you know me for you know wearing neon shirts and stuff. So the giveaway. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take three from here, three from here, and create a bag of six. Okay, let's do that right now. Let's do that live right now, okay? While nobody is watching, do that live. I'm going to take and crack this open ever so delicately because I'm going to continue to I'm going to use, reuse one of these bags. So we have the bag of the, and it says on here medium, and it says on here probably H heavy. So the green ones, the fluorescent neon yellow slash green ones, are 0.88, which if you use uh, the Tortex, that color is green. Not neon green, but just plain green. And the 0.73 is the pink, which is uh, says medium. Now 0.73 for Dunlop Tortex is the yellows, okay? Now obviously they probably follow the same color scheme, but these are just special neon fluorescent color ones. Bold picks for bold players is what it says. And let's give you a close-up shot of that so you can see what's going on here. Okay? As you can see, up here in this corner is the gauge bag of 12 and then all it is is it has bold picks for bold players on the back so this pack is released now we're going to very carefully release this pack okay so what I'm going to do right now live before you all is combine these into one giveaway package okay now this is kind of you know to celebrate the stuff that I got from Ernie Ball, but it's also to celebrate the Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course coming out. And I, I talk about different picks that you need that are, are essential to your sound that are in that course that uh, give you a good sound. And some of those are medium, some of those are heavy. So if you're not used to having these millimeter picks, then enter the giveaway and you could possibly win these and have two different, two different styles of picks to choose from playing bluegrass or playing electric guitar or whatever it is. So I'm going to take three from the orange, I mean from the yellow, and three from the pink. So you're going to get a pack of six and you're going to get uh, two different colors and two different gauges to experiment with. Once again, the pink uh, medium is 0.73 and the yellow is 0.88, which is a heavy gauge. Now, there it is. Somebody is going to win a pack of six picks from Ernie Ball, from me to you, okay? But once again, we're, going to, we're not going to stop there, but wait, there's more. We're going to do that again, okay? We're going to take another three picks from the pink, and we're going to take another three picks from the yellow, I can get this done in here. Actually, I'm going to use one of these to, to send it off in. So we got three, three yellow, three pink again. Put them together, send them off. Bam. Right there. Another free giveaway, all right? So you got two free giveaways. Same, same package here, okay? All right, now that leaves me with... One, two, three, four, five, six of each. Now, if you haven't seen my pick collection here, ah, you can know and tell that I don't need all those picks. Check this out. I'm a pick connoisseur. I'm a pick fiend, as you know. This is my pick collection, okay? I have many multiple kinds of picks, that I've used over the years that I experiment with and that I continue to buy because I'm always in search for some of the greatest picks. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, since I don't need 12 picks, these are mainly going to be for like students that I, you know, I'm not going to give away to or whatever. So I'm going to take one more pack. I was originally going to do two, but you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm doing three giveaways, guys. Three lucky winners of these picks so that you can start experimenting with different picks. Okay, so I'm going to take three and put them in the pick thing. Okay, and these three are going back in the bag. 
And then I'm going to take another three, and I hate to part with these because these are just awesome colors, aren't they? They're amazing. So I'm going to take three more and put them in the same pick pack. And later on, if I want some more of these, I'll just order them myself. I mean, they're I love this color. And three are going to go in another Ziploc pack. And guess what, guys? Just for you, here are three six packs of medium gauge and heavy gauge picks that I'm going to give away. All right? And how do you enter? Well, thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for watching so far. Because how to enter is simply this. Leave a comment below. Because what I'll do is I will look at all the comments from this video. Then I will put all the usernames into a random generator thing and pick the top three names, usernames. Then I will contact you. And what you will need to do is give me your mailing information so that I can send you those picks. Okay? All right, so that's that's what the way this is going to be done. I, I did this once before, and that worked out great. And what I'm going to ask is that you reply to me within 24 hours on that email or the YouTube or whatever it is, however I contact you. Reply to me within 24 hours, because if you don't, then I'll have to be forced to give it to the next person down the line, okay? So definitely leave a comment below. I will take all those comments, all the usernames from those comments, put them in a pool, put them on the internet and do like a random generator thing, and I will give the, the pick picks away to those, send them out in the mail, and you've got a pack of picks from me, okay? And uh, you know what? Let's add a little bit of value, if you want to call it that. Uh, when this is over with, I don't have a Sharpie in here right now. I wish I did. Actually, I do. I've got some big pens. I'm going to sign All right, let's see this. I'm going to sign. I don't want to mess up your pick, so I will actually sign the package as that. So I will say thanks for watching. And then my name and date. All right. Signed package by yours truly. Thanks for watching my name. Whoever wins this, I'll be sending this to you in the mail, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and sign those later. And, guys, get to commenting on the video below. This is not going to be to all 2,000 subscribers that's going to enter. I'm just going to get those who paid attention and watched this video, okay? So be one of those people and get one of those packs of picks, all right? Okay, so that's there. Let's go ahead, and it's already an hour. I've planned this for an hour and a half, but I did want to kind of wrap this up early. Uh, the next thing to do is let me make sure that my notes are, that I'm following my notes on both pages here. Okay. Um, new vids. Okay, so according to this, uh, got the other is next. It's at the very bottom of the show more area if you're watching this later, and to the side in the details column if you're watching this live. Um, going to be talking about a cool new discovery that I've known about all along but never really thought about how much easier it would make my life concerning recording slash playing guitar. Okay, and that is, and then let's see, the last two, uh, the two points, discussing some new videos including string reviews, I've recently recorded there on the way. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way because that'll be a lot easier to talk about. Uh, I've got a bunch of videos, of over 12 right now, that are just sitting there waiting to be released, uh, not including the Bluegrass Guitar Essentials videos. These videos are going to be encompassing. Let me go ahead and actually you know, pull up the thing so that I'm not uh, losing or so that I can actually see what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, let me just go ahead and go to my YouTube here and find my video manager. And then what I'll do is I'll do a view of uh, videos that are private so that I can see what actually needs to be released. Okay. Now, once again, later on, this will be irrelevant. These videos will have released. But for now, those of you watching live and within the next few weeks, these will be relevant. Um, 
got uh, some awesome the the video I just released this week. It was Tuesday. It was yesterday actually. If you're watching this live, Tuesday, March 25th, was the three and a half things that I first I play when I first pick up my acoustic guitar. If you haven't seen that, go check that video out. Uh, it's got some cool licks in there that you can do that I constantly, every time I pick up my acoustic guitar, I'm always playing these three or four things. And I say three and a half because one I kind of tell you about, but never really, never really go in detail about it. So I thought that'd be a cool little title to to mention. Next week we have the Tony Rice signature Martin Monell strings review coming out. After that we have another Bluegrass Guitar Essentials video. That's once again that's going to be every other week. Now what I'm trying to do is re reserve my main lesson videos and main you know Bluegrass stuff for not just Bluegrass but main lesson videos in general. Uh, for Tuesdays, okay. Now that leaves me four other days to work with, or five other days, whatever you know, depending on when I'm going to release these. I'm thinking about since I'm doing a lot more electric guitar stuff, I'm thinking about releasing those on Friday. Um, not sure exactly if I'm going to do that or not because right now I have some other things in the queue scheduled to release first. Uh, one of which is I have a video that I recently created for my own benefit so that I wouldn't forget how to do it again. I've done it two or three times. But I realized, hey, this could be something that would benefit everybody else. And that is how I create my YouTube thumbnails. I did a screencast on how I do that. And I use a software called GIMP. And I'll tell you exactly which GIMP. I think I've told you that before. I don't know if I go over that in this video. I'm pretty sure I, I don't think I do. So you need to go check out what's in a guitar player's dock video. And it will tell you a little bit more about GIMP and where you should get it from. Um, there's some from, from Windows. And there's one that's got uh, for Mac, and it's got like a bundle package that's free that you get with it. Some more extra scripts and things like that. So definitely check out the What's in the Guitar Player's Doc uh, video for that. Um, but I'll tell you how, to, how I create my thumbnails, how I've been experimenting with them, and they look very professional. They look very nice, and I'll show you exactly step by step how I go over that. That's going to be coming out it's probably this Friday. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I think I've got it set scheduled for March 28th. I'm just going to leave it there. See, every other day besides Tuesday is just for me to you know kind of work around with. I've also got um, some electric guitar electric guitar leak that I come up with just one day. I haven't got it scheduled, but it's private. It's on the way. Um, I've got the books that I own that you should read, version number three, and it's coming out. I'll be releasing it uh, pretty soon. See, I don't know exactly whether to schedule days like Tuesdays for guitar lessons, mostly acoustic, and Fridays for electric guitar, and Wednesdays for business stuff, and Thursdays for this and that. I don't want to bombard everybody with all these videos, so I'm just trying to pace it and trying to balance it, you know, the release dates as much as I can without overwhelming everybody. Do a little bit of content that you can learn. Do a little bit of content that's, you know, entertainment value like the books I, that I own you should read. Different things like that. I still have yet to find a great system for that, but I'm working on it. I've also got three lessons that you're going to want to stay tuned for. If you love my bluegrass lessons, you're going to want to stay tuned for these. And these are Lonesome Fiddle Blues. Okay, I'm going to be doing that. I had a request on my uh, guitar lesson suggestion box to do that video. And I have been looking at that, by the way, trying my best to kind of keep up with that and get those, you know, get those videos kind of out of the queue. You know, when it, whenever I'm short on ideas or, you know, whenever I get a chance, I try to go back and look at that and use those um, as your requests so that I can get those out and show you, hey, I am paying attention. Here's the videos. I'm trying to do my best on this. So that's Lonesome Fiddle Blues is going to be coming out soon. Um, I've got two videos, two part, a part one and a part two on Jerusalem Ridge, okay, for you bluegrass fanatics. Steve Cody actually uh, gave me the idea for, I think, Lonesome Fiddle Blues and Jerusalem Ridge. So thanks, Steve, for that, if you're watching. These are very in-depth um, on, on what I, you know, whenever I play Jerusalem Ridge or Lonesome Fiddle, this is how I do it. I go in very, very big detail on that. That's why it's in two parts, okay? One of them is a 30-minute video. One of them is about a 13-minute video. All right, so you definitely want to check those out. I've also got releasing... As of right now, releasing April 4th and April 5th, a 2.0 version of Batitude, uh, the, the backing track that I released, I don't know, about a month or two ago. And I finally got it done, and I was wanting to get it on there and everything, but there was a little bit of a few issues on there that I had to go back and correct and kind of work on. And the, the first part of that video 
demonstrates what that is. It, it'll tell you exactly why I had to go back and redo some of it and create a 2.0 version and all this. But it's basically for the Digitech RP355. It's a demo of this pedal that I've been using that I've been telling you about and I'm going crazy about because I love it so much. I've been using it more than I ever have, especially since I got this new, new the guitar. For me, it's new anyway. Um, and the, the fourth is the Vatitude video. The fifth is another screencast tutorial, this time on how I edited Vatitude, how I edited that video. And so if, you, if you've been trying to get into some video editing of yourself, I'm using iMovie in this video uh, in this, to edit that video. So if you, want, if you ever wanted to learn how to do you know, video editing, and, you know, especially with iMovie or maybe some ideas, it's not just to show you how to do this, but it was some ideas that I found along the way by watching other videos, like panning and you know different shots and stuff like this. Uh, if you watch that video and you see, you know, I want to be able to do this myself, stay tuned because the very next day, which will be a Saturday, April 5th, um, it'll be releasing my video on how I actually edited that. Okay, So it's about uh, 26 minutes long. It's not very long at all. Uh, it's a good tutorial video for you to watch and check out. Let me just go ahead real quick and check and make sure there's nobody here. I'm trying to pay attention to everybody, make sure that nobody... Okay, for right now, it's just me, myself, and I, and whoever's out there in later after this is recorded in release land. All right, so on YouTube, let's go back to that. I've got uh, Bad Attitude, and the, uh, immediately following that, the day following that, will be the release of how I actually did it in iMovie. Okay, so if you're looking for video editor type stuff, that's coming out later. Once again, that's towards the end of the week, uh, way away from the Tuesday. Tuesday is my main day for things like I was telling you about Jerusalem Ridge, Lonesome Fiddle Blues, the, the string reviews, you know, things like that. Those are my Tuesdays. Those are my main content things. The other things that I've been doing is kind of like side projects, like screencasts, um, and you know, uh, you know, just uh, how do I create thumbnails and how do I, you know edit videos, all that stuff is later on the week. Okay, Tuesday is my main day that I'm focusing on for my main uh, uh, lessons and things like that. Okay, lastly, what that brings me to is, okay, I've got another just random uh, bluegrass video lesson for you guys. It's about 15 minutes long, 16 minutes. I'm trying to get these short as possible. But I also have another series of what's coming up, okay, and um, that is what we're about to talk to now, this cool new discovery that I told you about, that I've known about all along, but now I didn't realize how easy it would make my life when playing guitar. And that is the Digitech RP X Edit software, the RP Series X Edit software, okay? Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this here. I was going to show this to you and tell you what I use it for, but because I've got actually two videos on this, the overview and setup is the video number one. Once again, not sure when these are going to release, but these are on down the line. They are uploaded, ready to go. And whenever some of these videos kind of, you know, uh, fall off the charts and get released, then I can start planning these other ones. But uh, I've got a video on overview and setup of how I uh, plug it into the computer, how I get it to work, how you can start using the XEdit software with your computer. And the also the part two is the longer video. It's a little over an hour, and it's tips for creating your signature sounds, okay? Uh, so that you can, you know, create your own kind of sounds, whether it be via the Exit software that I'm using with the Digitech pedal RP355, or with a different pedal like RP350 or 360, the one that just came out, uh, RP155, 255, another Digitech pedal, another company entirely like Boss or Line Six or whatever. You know, you can use those tones, and uh, all these companies have kind of like the same tones, and you can kind of guess at those tones in these other uh, pedals to create your own signature sounds. So now that's not including some other uh, videos that I've actually been working on, and one of those being uh, the first string review from the Ernie Ball strings that they gave me. I've got it completed, spliced together, and all I got to do is just upload it. And another thing is is a video that I've been working on um, is my actual official review of the Digitech RP355. Never really sat down and done a review on it. Always wanted to do one in this style, and if you remember the Joyo pedal that I did, I kind of did it as a you know, video here, and you you know kind of like we're doing now in the Hangouts, and then on, over off to the side you could see me tweaking the knobs of the pedal in real time. 
So I've done that with the Digitech RP355. I've set it on my desk. I'm tweaking it in real time. And the main aspect of this video is not just um, my review of the pedal, which, you know, that's, I'm going to call it my official review there. But the main reason I want to do this is to show you how to get your own signature sound in three easy steps using the Digitech RP355 and other similar pedals by Digitech. Usually it's the same thing across all their models because they don't change a lot of stuff because it's just simple. It works. Don't change it. If it's not broken, don't try to fix it. Okay. You can innovate, but don't rearrange and, and completely change the game and all this stuff. With their pedals are very awesome, user friendly, and you can create your sound in only three easy steps using their pedal, the Digitech RP355. That'll be coming out later as well. Uh, the difference between that and the one I just mentioned uh, on uh, creating your sound, your own signature sound, is that I'm using the XEdit software for that, whereas I use the actual pedal for the create your sound in three steps. Okay, so that's the difference there. So what I'm going to talk about now is this cool new discovery called Digitech XEdit. Now, my goal, hopefully, my hope is that in uh, this um, hangout that I won't get kicked off again. And you're about to have some more playing, so stay tuned. I don't want to get kicked off again by doing the screen share. That's why I'm using Firefox. Now, I'm hoping that this works. If it doesn't, I'll have to start recording again and then, you know, count this as part two of this hangout, okay? So if, if, I, if I get kicked off and it kicks me off, uh, I just want to say thanks so much for watching, and uh, please do check out bluegrassguitaressentials.com. Go sign up for the, the, news, or the uh, mailing list so you can be kept up to date on the early access and all the other things coming on. Please subscribe, click the like button, tell your friends. And if this is the end of this video because it kicks me off, I want to say thanks so much for watching. Hope you got a lot of this uh, hanging out. But if it's not, stay tuned because uh, part two or the continuation of this is on its way. So let's try to do a little bit of screen sharing and uh, see exactly what happens. Thanks so much. If I can find it here. <laughs> here we go. Okay, select the window. All right, select that one. Here we go. Cross your fingers and toes. All right, guys. Looks like it's working. Awesome. Awesome. So Firefox doesn't have a problem with screen share, so from now on, Firefox is what I'll be using for Hangouts if I can remember. All right. So here's what's going on. Now, you're not going to be able to see me playing but you're going to hear what's going on. This is the actual software that comes with the RP355 pedal. Okay, now what's going on is this can actually show you what I'm playing, what I've been talking about this whole time. With the software, um, you have extra parameters that you can edit that you can't edit in the actual pedal. And that is uh, the mid hertz and the treble hertz, and maybe, maybe there's a couple other things that I don't know about yet because I haven't really experimented with. But once again, this is, I'm not going to go into high detail over this because we're going, this is going to be released in a video, a couple video series later on down the line that I just told you about. But for example, the patch that I'm using now is called Flawless. And what you can't see is off to the left of me, it actually shows you all the different, all the, uh, it's just a list of 1 through 70, yeah, 1 through 70, and it's just the names of all the presets. So I can, I can select number 9. Petrucci, and it will pull up on the screen. And all these parameters you see here will change in accordance with that, okay? So I can pull up Steve Vai, and it pulls it up, and you see all these other things kind of change, okay? So, and I go over where to download these patches, and I'm going to go over uh, how to get them on your RP355 and on your pedal, you know, and all this stuff on those videos. So those will be in the weeks to come, okay? So please stay tuned for that. But for now... I was using Flawless. This is one of my favorite tones that I created. Okay, and uh, so let's go ahead and get one of these nice um, fluorescent green picks out. All right, fluorescent yellow picks out. I can't believe I put them all in here. I'm going to get one of these out and start wailing away with it because I really love the color of these. All right, so 
right now. So what you can see on your screen right now, should be able to, is the presets of all this. Okay, now what I'm going to do in the actual videos is say, is kind of show you how you can get these kind of sounds on your pedal, whether it be a Digitech or a Boss pedal or a Line 6 pedal or, you know, anything else. Basically, every company has the same kind of sounds. They have a clean, they have a high gain, they have a chunk, they have a metal, they have a solo, and they all have their own brand. Notice this is Digitech this, Digitech that, Digitech this. They have their own brand, okay? Then they also have uh, models of all these other amplifiers like Marshall, JCM, Plexi Drive. You have a Marshall Jump Drive. You have a, a Fender Blackface, Fender Tweed. You have uh, a Mesa Boogies. All these other companies, you know, kind of uh, replicate these same tones. So if you've got a Boss pedal or a Line 6 pedal, all you have to do is say, well, if I want his flawless tone, all I have to do is find a high gain amp and a metal cabinet. Okay, and that's what I'm using here to get this flawless sound. And you can actually look at all these and notice that this is a scooped sound. So you have scoop, bright, mid-boost, and warm. Okay, so you can say, well, I need a scoop sound, and if I don't have the equalizer as a scoop, I can actually take and scoop out my mids myself. You'll notice that the mids uh, are at six decibels, the bass is at five, and the trebs are at nine. So the mids are kind of scooped just a little bit. Um, and you also have a distortion, what what uh, distortion that you're working with. And this is, in this case is a sparkle drive that's already enabled. Okay, so basically this is how I go over it with you in those videos that are to come. But this is what I was telling you about. Notice how easy this is. The cool thing is, whatever I do up here happens on my pedal instantly. I can look down at my pedal and it, and it shows what it, what it does. The only thing that I haven't found on here that's, uh, uh, that I can do is enable the tuner. You kind of have to do that with your feet. Um, you can even enable the wah if you need to over here. You don't have to do that with your feet. Uh, the looper has to be enabled with your feet. Uh, I think the bypass, I don't see it up there, so I think it has to be enabled with your feet. So some things, you know, you kind of still got to work with as a stomp box, you know, uh, on the floor. Uh, but the cool thing is you can actually save these, you know, the presets. You don't have to do that through the pedal. You can actually save it through the software uh, and tell it to store this preset to whatever number, whatever channel. Uh, these tone library, effects library, that will come later in the videos, how to create your custom tone in three easy steps. That comes later. Okay, that's in that video. But notice this. So now I don't have to worry about fiddling with things and hitting stomp box mode and all this stuff on my feet. Now if I want a sound, from now on what I'm going to be doing is coming up to here, clicking a preset, telling it what I want. I can click, uh, I can change this on the spot and it doesn't change it in my pedal until I, unless I tell it to. So I can have these things on the fly. I can say I want some delay here and I can make it a modulated delay, no reverb, and you know maybe change the distortion to something else if I wanted to. Here's all these different distortions. So I can change these to a tone zone, or zone, I don't know, that's a metal zone, I think, from Boss. You know, you can, a big muff type thing, a fuzzy, uh, a Proco Rat, an MXR distortion pedal, Boss DS distortion pedal, uh, a Guy Tone Overdrive, a DOD 250, uh, Sparkle Drive, I think it might be by Fuzz Tone, uh, an 808 Overdrive or a Tube Screamer, you know. Video Labs, I think, is Sparkle Drive, actually, not a Vox, but a Video Labs. But I can do all this stuff on the fly. And that's how much easier it is. And I will tell you right now, it does help using a heavier pick. These uh, uh, yellow picks are a little bit of a heavier gauge. They are 0.88. They do feel a little bit better as far as, you know, they got more stability for the fast stuff, that I want, you know, the fast uh, alternate picking stuff that I want to do. Uh, whereas the dollar picks, yes, they have a grip tip, but that, that little part in the middle where it's very flexible, I just don't really like that too much. And the, like I said, the jazz picks, uh, the Fender, or the uh, Dunlop jazz picks are a little too small for me. They're great for, you know, teaching you, 
uh, very preci much precision and articulation because you really got to pay attention to what you're doing and it really forces you to do that. But just for jamming and playing and anything other than practicing and trying to hone my technique, I've got to have a standard size pick. There just ain't no way around it. So, all right, so. All right, so that's basically the new discovery that I want to tell you about is this, the X Edit Editor. And if you have a pedal that has software with it, please figure out how to hook it up to your computer because it will make your life so much easier, okay? So I'm going to disable the screen sharing right now and go back to me. And um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the, uh, according to the, the points over here I'm talking about here, um, is the direction of my totally free guitar newsletter. Now, this is the last thing we're going to talk about, and I'm going to end it for today, guys. Basically, I just want to say that my newsletter is uh, upcoming on its two-year anniversary. And I started it back in 2010 in May, and it's already almost April. It's already almost two years old. I've got over 60 and growing lessons on there, probably even more. I, I want to say it's closer to 70 because if I've got 400 plus videos and a lot of them are unlisted, a bunch of the unlisted ones, most of them are from uh, just newsletter only access. Okay, so it's coming up on two years, and I'm finding that as I'm creating more courses, more content, and I'm trying to pay attention to you know all my subscribers on YouTube and newsletter and all this. It's kind of stretching me out, and I found finally found some uh, ways to kind of, you know, some things have been happening where I can actually have a little bit more um, freedom, a little bit more time, uh, just uh, different directions are happening. They're kind of forming, they're shifting, they're kind of, you know, and I need to move with that. In order to do that, I'm just one person. I can't do it all, you know. I've got a team, yes, but currently they're working on the Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course. That's just all there is to it. Until that gets done, I really can't afford to use them for anything else. Now, after this is over with, I'll branch out and see what else I can use them for, maybe editing some of these videos or, you know, doing some of the thumbnails or whatever, uh, article writing, whatever, stuff like that. But I found that the newsletter is as much content as I'm trying to create for YouTube. I don't really have a whole lot of time to create for newsletter. Uh, not that I'm leaving them out, but it's just... The things that I create for YouTube are kind of spur of the moment. They're kind of, you know, um, if they're not bluegrass associated, then they're like screen sharing and screencasting and business stuff, stuff that people that are on my Totally Free Guitars newsletter did not subscribe for. So they want you know, the Totally Free lessons, and I understand that, and I'm going to give them that. But I do that in, in a formula as kind of like it's usually a series videos. Like I'll have a series on different tips and techniques to make your playing style better or uh, I've got one on there uh, the series of how to use the cage method a series on how to use chords how to create chords chord theory chord formulas things like that and that's kind of like the direction that I'm been doing for the newsletter this whole time but what I'm going to start doing is that's coming up later it's going to be releasing I don't know a couple more weeks and that is uh, for those of you that are subscribed at uh, the website, you can go to secretsoftexasblues.com slash newsletter and sign up. I'm going to be doing a redesign of the template and of the whole look and of the layout of the newsletter. Because right now it's got like a dark look. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now, if you're if you have not subscribed and you're going to subscribe, it will be a long time before you get this new redesign because you are in a system to where every week it shoots out emails to you for the lessons that you have signed up for. And I have recorded two years worth of lessons. So you got to get through those first before you even get to the new redesign. And it's not saying that those videos are of less quality. They're not. They're, they're amazing videos. They're exclusive content that nobody else can get unless you're on that newsletter because the links are unlisted. Everything's unlisted on there. You can't get it otherwise. But you know, after you get through that, you'll notice so many. How many ever how long it takes you to get through to the point that I'm talking about now? That there will be a redesign of the newsletter, and there's going to be one soon. 
uh, I want to be able to do it's it's a weekly thing right now and it will be if you start right now you'll get it weekly for a couple years probably because that's how long its newsletter has been going but what's going to happen is I'm going to going to kind of back that off to a monthly thing that way I'm not kind of you know having to worry about well where are they at in the system you know is it is are they catching up whatever what I want to do is make it a monthly thing so that um, I can release the series instead of you know if there's four parts of the series you have to wait each week to get the next part but what I'm going to do is so that I don't have to keep uh, making sure the videos released and scheduled and all this stuff what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's a monthly newsletter and what happens is you get the whole series up front you can you can get to those videos and you will have a month to work on those videos before the next one comes out that way you're not struggling to try to get you know the videos done you have a month to get these videos done and, and gone through before your next ish, issue releases so now the new format will allow me to have one big video up top and like if there's a series of three have or four you have one big video up here and then you have three smaller videos you can click on and that's your entire series and you know just some uh, article of not articles but some text on there telling you what it's about what this issue is about you know it's stuff like that so I think that will help me out a lot uh, because right now is they're getting caught up and I don't really have a whole lot of ideas of what to do for the next newsletter. I actually got to sit down next week and do some plans on what I want to do. That newsletter is mainly electric guitar stuff. There's a couple of acoustic guitar things in there, but it's mainly for electric guitar. It's basically a university. I mean, it's got tons of ideas and tons of techniques. And you'll see as you start the newsletter how I progress. Today you see me with you know the backgrounds, my professional backgrounds, and things like that. But I started this newsletter when I was in a one-bedroom a one apartment. Okay, um, and so you can see as it grows and progresses how I move out of that one bedroom into where I got married and we moved into this house and I started using, you know, the big professional background and then I started getting better lighting. I re researched some lighting and got some lighting equipment. And you can kind of see that growth process as it goes along. So, but uh, I'm at the point now to where it's time to switch horses, as Ray Edwards says. It's okay to switch uh, to a different horse, especially if the one you're riding is tired. And with the newsletter, I just feel that it's time to go a different uh, direction, not do different videos, but the format in the, the schedule, release schedule, needs to be a little different. So if you already are subscribed to that newsletter and you've been subscribed to it for a long time, then you'll probably be seeing that pretty soon. And if you're in the halfway, you know, you've been on the newsletter for a year or a year and a half or you know, just started, it'll take you a while before you even get there. You should totally disregard this, and when it happens, you'll know what I was talking about, okay? So I just wanted to say thanks, guys, so much for watching today. This has been an awesome hangout, although I have been burning up in the house. I've got the door closed. <laughs> I shouldn't have left it open, but I've been, like, sweating and burning up in here because the heat's on because it's kind of a cold day even though it's sunny outside. But it has been an hour and a half, as uh, I said. I guess it did take that long. I'm, tr I'm going to try not to do these that long, but... It's nice to get in, uh, sit down and relax, get away from the business side of things, and just be creative on the guitar and kind of you know talk all this stuff out and, and, and tell you guys what's happening in my life as a guitarpreneur. Okay, thanks so much for watching, and I'm glad it didn't completely kill when I screen shared. I guess I'll just have to keep using Firefox for everything, Hangouts or Google or whatever, because Chrome, even though it's made by Google, it just doesn't it hasn't been working correctly ever since I installed. Mavericks OS 10 on the Mac. So that's all I got to talk about today. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Thanks for everybody who tuned in. Thanks, Dad, for watching. Please go check out his uh, YouTube channels. I'm not exactly sure what it is even called. His name is uh, Tim Beatty, and uh, he's my dad. He does some uh, Bible lessons. I've recently instructed him and taught him how to get videos going up and running. So you can check his uh, uh, videos out as well. He's got some uh, awesome awesome insights on uh, the Bible. I've been preaching and been, on, been at it a lot longer than I have. So uh, kudos to you, Dad, for tuning in today for the first time. Kudos to everybody out there. And don't forget, if you want signed baggies of picks, three total for uh, whoever wants to win, whoever uh, signs up, please leave a comment below. I will check these comments, 
I will randomize the usernames and I'll be contacting you probably within the next week or so to say who won. So, okay, so the deadline is let's just say one week from today, next Wednesday, uh, whatever that date is. Let me see what the date is here. Next Wednesday, I think it'll already be April. April the 2nd. Actually, let's go ahead and make the deadline next Thursday. I'm just going to go ahead and type it on my uh, calendar, Google Calendar. Giveaway deadline. Pick giveaway deadline. Okay. Put that on there. And next Thursday will be the deadline. It'll probably be next Thursday or next Friday before I can get a hold of you. But I will be getting a hold of you soon after that and let you know who won. Leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. Please click the like button. Please subscribe if you're new. All kinds of videos that I've been releasing, I've been releasing for years in just a new direction this year, doing more screencasts. I recently did a screencast of how I plan my week using Google Calendar. You can check that out. Um, I'd like to do some more backing tracks and record some more things and be more creative. It's so easy to get caught up in the whole business side of this stuff. And I understand where you guys are coming from when you say, I want to see more guitar, you know. Um, I really want to do that. And it's so easy to get caught up in this business side of things. I sometimes want to sit back and, you know what, let's just play. Sometimes I've wanted to get on hangouts, just sit here and play for everybody and just have fun. But I figured that some people might miss out because it's an unscheduled thing. And, you know, I don't know if uh, maybe that's extra content that could be added later. But I may start doing that. I don't know. I want to be kind of just at, as a creative moment hits me, I want to do it. Not just sit down in front of a, you know, behind a, in front of a professional background and create a, a video and have it all professional. If something hits me, I want to be able to sit down and say, hey, let's just record this now. Let's do it as a hangout because it's already recorded if it's a hangout, even if it's live. And if you miss it, then I'm sorry. I didn't notify you beforehand, but that will at least be extra guitar content that will be out there the moment that I get done recording it. So thanks, guys, so much for watching. I know I say that all the time, two or three times at the end of the video. I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. I'm going to sign off today and get on with my day, get a, a, a video lesson, or not a video lesson, but a, a lesson going, actually happening in another hour or so, a couple lessons, and then head to Revival tonight, have an awesome Revival, and uh, it's awesome being a guitar player, that's all I got to say, it's awesome being able to play guitar, and I hope that somehow I've helped you be able to do that, and, and inspired you to pick up the guitar on your journey, so thanks so much for watching, I'm going to get off here, and I'll see you guys next time. God richly bless you.